This video is the first in a series about an often overlooked part of the eye, the vitreous humor. The vitreous humor is the jelly that fills the hollow space in the center of the eyeball. It has much the same consistency as egg white. It is distinct from aqueous humor, the watery fluid that occupies the front part of the eye. The description of invisible bite design captures the idea that you don't really pay attention to the vitreous until it causes problems. For example, floaters, macular traction, and retinal tear slash detachment. In this series we will explore the vitreous, the problems it causes, and how they are repaired. This outline shows the vitreous in relation to the other eye structures. To help focus on the vitreous I have removed the colors from the other eye parts. This is the main body of the vitreous. The heavier gray line lining the inside of the eye wall is a condensed or thickened part of the vitreous called the vitreous cortex. This part is important because it is attached to the entire inside surface of the retina. That attachment is the key feature in problems caused by the vitreous. The strongest attachment is in the front of the eye at the vitreous base. How strong? Later in life the vitreous cortex will usually eventually separate from the retina everywhere except at the vitreous base. There are other places of attachment that are also important and we will discuss them later. The curved lines through the center represent a canal that carried blood vessels in the developing eye. After embryologic development the blood vessels disappear and leave this remnant called cloquet's canal. It doesn't do anything but I include it to be complete. Now let's take advantage of our ability to make diagrams and show what the vitreous would look like if it was dissected free from the back of the eye. I have left it attached to the front of the eye for orientation. The bold gray circle is the vitreous cortex. This eyeball dissection has actually been carried out by Jerry Seabag in his studies on the vitreous. The photograph shows a bright light shining through the vitreous against a dark background. Looks pretty similar to our diagram. Now, subtracting Cloquet's canal, where the canal ends at the optic nerve, there is a circular hole in the vitreous cortex. Now, if we were looking through a low power microscope, we would see strands of collagen fibers running from the front to the back of the eye. Collagen is a protein chain which gives structure to tissues. It comes in many types in different parts of the body. In the eye it is mostly type 2 collagen with smaller amounts of several other kinds. Let's take a piece of vitreous and look closer. A higher power microscope shows the collagen fibers with crosslinks in between the fibers that maintain a specific separation distance. That separation is thought to be important to allow light to pass through. Surrounding the collagen strands are many molecules of hyaluronin, technically a glycosaminoglycan. That means it is a long molecule made of sugar subunits. So you would describe the vitreous as a gel. It is about 99% water. The long strands of collagen give it its structure. The hyaluronin molecules attract and hold water within the structure. And that is how the vitreous appears in a young person. However, like everything else, it doesn't stay that way. Here I am showing that in the body of the vitreous there are parts of the gel that are starting to liquefy. This process starts early in life, usually by the second decade. The areas of liquefaction increase gradually with time. By age 70, typically 50% of the gel is liquefied. What is happening with the liquefaction? It appears the cross-linking is being lost, for reasons that are not entirely clear. As the crosslinks are lost, the collagen strands begin to form clumps, which means they block light transmission, and so they cast a shadow on your retina. Those are the usual floaters that you see in your vision. Here is a way to picture that on a larger scale. In the newborn eye, the vitreous is very clear. In a couple decades, the collagen strands form a few clumps, somewhat like this, and in later decades there are more clumps, that is, more floaters. 
Not everyone necessarily gets the same amount, but this diagram is a fairly average representation of what we see looking into the eye. This is a good time to mention that the appearance of new floaters can also be a symptom of a significant problem, like a retinal tear or ocular hemorrhage. Should you notice any of these warning symptoms, you should contact your ophthalmologist promptly. Our next subject is not retinal detachment, but vitreous detachment. In addition to the vitreous liquefying, the vitreous cortex begins to thin and it becomes less strongly attached to the retina. The combination of one, liquefying vitreous, and two, thinning of the cortex, leads to the next major event. The liquefied vitreous in front of the fovea somehow finds a way to seep between the vitreous cortex and the retina and the two begin to separate. Separation usually begins around the fovea. Because there is a strong attachment of the vitreous at the fovea, initially it takes this tented shape. If the foveal attachment releases, then you get this lens shape. Further separation leaves the last vitreous attached around the optic nerve. And finally, the vitreous pulls away from the optic nerve. Now the vitreous body is tethered only in the front of the eye, with a mass of gel free to slosh back and forth with eye movement. We call this whole process posterior vitreous detachment, because it is only the back part of the vitreous that pulls free from the retina. The front part remains firmly attached at the vitreous base, as we mentioned before. Remember, it is the vitreous which is pulling away from the retina, it is not the retina that is detaching. And this is essentially the typical life path of the vitreous humor. Before we finish, I want to mention an interesting side subject. About one in a hundred people have something called asteroid hyalosis, or stars in their eyes. The stars are crystals floating in the vitreous. Why are they there? No one knows for sure. When we look in, they are reflective. This is a very mild example, but sometimes they are so dense that it is difficult to see details inside the eye. But people don't seem to have much problem looking outward until a posterior vitreous detachment happens, then they suddenly become noticeable. In summary, the vitreous is a gel with a particular set of structural features which affect its behavior. As time goes by, changes in the collagen structure are responsible for accumulation of typical floaters. The process of vitreous liquefying and posterior vitreous detachment are responsible for a range of problems we will cover in video 2. And in video 3 we will talk about how those problems are repaired by a surgery called a vitrectomy. Here are selected references if you want to read further.